What's up, you guys? Your girl G here. Welcome back. You see, um, I'm in bed, all right? And that's just what it's gonna be. Y'all know if I sit here, it's gonna be a quick little recap. Uh, Married to Medicine, it was a finale, so there honestly wasn't too much. Um, excuse the bonnet. I just didn't feel like, you know, taking my hair out, combing it, all that good stuff. I usually hate coming on camera in my bonnet, but I bought a cute bonnet <laughs> for that exactly that reason. I don't walk out the house with it, but you know, it's it's cute for the time for the for the time being, all right? Um but yeah, you guys, so Married to Medicine. We open up um with everybody or all the ladies talking to Alicia about where the where the money went, okay? Where did the money go? Allegedly, it was $150,000 in the span of like two to three months or something like that. And all Alicia could say was, I mean, I don't know. Like, I I think it was on the kids or something. What do you mean? I don't know. And everybody conspiracy theory talking about, mm-mm, uh-uh, Alicia got that mad money. She, she went and got her bank account. After chemo went and took that money, invested, and, and literally it went tits up. She said, uh-uh, no, because I'm with a dummy who don't want to listen, who feel like he always got the right answer. And, um, you know, I need to make sure that it, when push comes to shove, you know, I got some money I can fall back on. And, you know, the other ladies, they were kind of giving her a little bit of that advice, you know, Heavenly and Jackie. They were like, girl, yeah, have you a man, you know, cool and everything, but make sure you got your own bank account. And then they started getting into, um just the convictions of a wife <laughs> basically heavily uh kind of revealed that uh damon kind of you know thinks the same way as kiba not as drastic you know but he definitely is one of those dudes who kind of feels like you know men take the charge men be leaders like you know they are the king type situation and um, you know, Heavily was like, shoot, uh, you know, the expectation of things, you know, if you got to lie a little, basically Heavily's like, I'll tell a little white lie to, you know, keep the peace of my marriage. You know, if he feels like he want a woman who's going to cook clean, you know, all of the above, then why didn't it get at work? Okay. I'm going to have me a, a cleaner come through. Okay. D -d -d wash the dishes, soak the clothes, you know, and then uh, on the other days, I don't feel like cooking. I'm going to go buy it. Like Jackie said, I'm going to go buy it and put it in the pot like I cooked it. And he could walk in and, it, you know, it's stir fry for dinner. And low key, I done called China King 123 down the street <laughs> and put the stir fry in my pot. And you wouldn't know no otherwise. And so it's like the fact that they're talking about all of the things that they had to do to keep up with the illusion of like their man being the head of household and what they expect out of their women. Like it's just baffling to me. And I, I really want to make another video on that, honestly, too, just talking about like how men are putting the responsibility of masculinity on women, obtaining their masculinity. Like we, as they say, like y'all are supposed to make us feel needed and, you know, make me feel like a man, but I'm a woman. So how am I a woman who's beneath you, but yet I have the power to make you feel like a man? That I, and I have the power to emasculate you as a woman, you know, that just really baffles me. D d putting that responsibility on women as if it's not you, you're the man that you're, you're supposed to be secure in your own manhood, but a woman who you deem beneath you can take that from you. You clearly view her as less powerful than you because, like you say, you view her beneath you. Um, yeah, I just. It, Sometimes we be watching these like married shows and the way that these men just be telling on themselves with this shitty ass logic of, you know, the end all end all being the man. And y'all know how Marceau and Martel, they love to get mad to my, oh, these new age women, we need to take our power back. <sighs> okay, whatever. Um, So they all get together for the little 10 year reunion thing. Super cute. Uh, Everybody wore like silver because I guess uh, to represent a decade is like aluminum or something like that. So it was cute. And so everybody kind of went down and, you know, they were eating and everything. And they just were kind of discussing, obviously, all the years that, you know, they were all together and the friendship. And, you know, we did the the flashbacks and y'all, they done been through some things, you know, from the, the couple's retreat where it heavily, you know, opened up a can of worms. Um, Cecil talked about how, you know, no matter what, he always remembers, like, heavily re uh, renewing their vows. 
um you know obviously what Jackie went through like as friends they've been through a lot Jackie went through Curtis old big headed um you know walking through the busiest airports with another woman um and then so uh Simone she asked has anybody ever used the word or brought the word you know divorce and Eugene and Toya raised their hand like yeah we done been there and for them, we saw it last season with, you know, Eugene and, uh, or last season with Eugene and COVID and all things like that. It got tough for them. And I think something, yes, Toya absolutely had the expectation of your husband still maintaining being a husband. But I don't, I, I just think sometimes her, Toya's delivery is terrible, y'all. It is so terrible the way she delivers to Eugene and it kind of low-key pisses me off because why are you talking to him like that? Like, it's just something about the way Toya, like, brings up her issues with Jean that just confuses me sometimes. Like, why are you so damn abrasive? Like, and Eugene is like, he's a soft-spoken man in the best way. As in, like, you could just seriously have a conversation with him. But that was like her son said, like, why are you always arguing? Because Toya... It seems Toya only knows how to argue. She doesn't know how to conversate. And that's something that she's going to have to work on. Um, everything doesn't have to be a disgruntled, you know, fight situation. It could just literally be a conversation. But I think the only thing Toya knows how to do is argue, you know. Um, but, you know, Eugene was dealing with COVID as a doctor and trying to save people and not being able to... You know, a lot of nurses and doctors, like, were not okay. Imagine spending day and night trying to save people's lives and they're just gone. Like, literally every day somebody's, you know, gone and then you got to come home and hopefully not infect your whole family. And I'm sure, you know, that changed Eugene in a way that Toya wasn't giving grace to because all she was thinking was like, I need my husband, I need my husband, I need my husband. You know, you ain't doing your husbandly duties, which is fair. He, you know, if he wasn't, but I just think at that time, Toya wasn't necessarily extending grace to Eugene and the aspect of like what he was mentally going through that kept him from being the husband that she needed. That's what I mean. Um, so uh, Simone and Jackie talk about how, you know, had it not been for the group, you know, we might not have been, you know, still together. We all know what happened with Cecil Simone, they literally was on the reunion couch, like, this ain't it, and everybody else was like, no, it ain't, get your asses back together, you ain't, you are not splitting up on our watch, it ain't happening, and here they are, you know, together still to this day, Jackie and, and Curtis, you know, he finna leave to uh, the Dominican Republic, well, he did leave to the Dominican Republic after they got back from the trip, and then, uh, Heavenly spoke up, oh, uh, y'all see where everybody rose their hand, uh, Heavenly and Damon kept their hands down, <laughs> So heavily, he was like, you know, I just want to give a shout out to Dr. Alicia, you know, um, you know, I've seen something that we're a little bit similar, you know, uh, similar in Kima, you know, Damon, he, you know, he doesn't say much, but he kind of does have some of the similar beliefs as you, as you know, the man, you know, Damon feels like, you know, the man should be forced to, to take charge. And that's the problem. Y'all got a lot of men feeling out here like they're leaders when they're really not. Y'all are pushing them to be something that they cannot handle. And so a lot of these men go out here and create all these freaking home fronts and get with women and start having kids. And they don't even know how to handle their own life. And y'all are trying to tell every man that they're a leader when you're not. Like, not every man is a leader, a good leader at that. Um, And so... The fact that Heavily was like, yeah, Eugene kind of think the same way. I think a lot of us aren't really that surprised because of how much Heavily is always with the, the daddy stuff, just like Monique. Ugh. Um, but uh, when it got to Alicia, she talked about how, you know, she told Kima like, yo, divorce, like it's on the table. And then come to find out the reason she felt that way was she said she was pregnant and ready to divorce him. She's like, I'm pregnant, feet swole, and this man literally still has an expectation for me to be getting up cooking three-course meals. And that's literally what these men really think. They want you to be superwoman. Do it all, you know, because I saw my single mother, my single mother did it all. You know, you can be you should be able to do it. And it's just kind of like, if I'm doing the same things as a married woman that 
you know, single men or, or that men are watching their single mothers do, that's a problem. There's no reason I should be living the same life as you're seeing as a single mother. Now, Kima wasn't raised that way, but he's he was raised watching women do it all. So that's what he's expecting Alicia to do. And it's like, where do you pick up as a husband though? Cause as Alicia said, you ain't doing the manly things. You ain't you ain't fixing no plumbing. You ain't, you know, building no house. You ain't taking care of the kids. Like she's working two jobs. Like I, Kima, what are you here for? And it's starting to seem more and more apparent why she needed to keep that $150,000 if that's what she did with it. Kima is a mess, y'all. He really is. She was pregnant, as they say, barefooted pregnant and, and, and still wants you to do it all. Like, she was like, I need you to help. And all Kima could say to that was like, you know, for a man, you know, that was like a wake-up call. Like, you know, for, for men, when we hear divorce, what we think is um oh no like you know she's gonna take my kids and you know she's gonna take half of my money and that every time we hear you speak about divorce that's literally the only thing that men keep talking about oh well, we get divorced you know we all end up broken y'all take all our money and it's like first of all you mad at women but that was established because back in the day women weren't working so if you want to be mad at anybody be mad at men because the reason that existed like that is because men didn't want women to work and so it was understood that, hey, if I divorce you and I ain't been working, I've been taking care of the household this whole time and the kids, you're going to have to pay for that. Literally. That's all you talk about with divorce. It wasn't the fact that, oh, the thought that I could lose my wife, the thought that, you know, I wouldn't be with the person I love anymore. All Kima was thinking about, but he was thinking about, oh, damn, like, what do I do if I, <laughs> if I lose the woman that's doing everything for me? What the fuck am I going to do, you know? So I just saw that. I was just like, ugh, roll my eyes. I can't wait for the reunion and see how they get in his ass. Um, so uh, was there anything else after that, Kima? No, I think that was it. Everybody got back home. Y'all know they were ending up doing the med gala. So according to, you know, Heavenly and Jackie, they were all like sitting together at a table somewhere with a planner. Everybody was supposed to put in a thousand dollars. All right, a thousand dollars. Jackie allegedly put in a little bit more and, and heavily, I'm assuming. And that was basically gonna cover the Met Gala. Well, Toya's over there at Simone's house going off because she's like, I am y'all trying to make me look bad, or she's like heavily trying to comfort me. And Simone, you ain't supporting me because girl, I'm giving you all these cases of wine, and that's more than a thousand dollars. So why would I pay? If I'm bringing something for a thousand, like basically worth that much. Um, I think Simone said, or Jackie said, first, one of them was like, not everybody drinks wine, Toya. One. Two, we can do more with your money than we can do with the wine. I think that's what Toya was like, not getting at. That wine, cool. That's more serving to you than it is like, okay, because the drinks and everything I'm sure would have been handled, you know, as a part of the package of catering and things like that, the, the alcohol was going to be there. But Toya was so, you know, set on bringing her wine because Toya knew it was an opportunity. Um, she wasn't going to do anything outside of that because all Toya is thinking about is, let me get this money, okay? Let me, you know, do what I'm supposed to do, which is is to promote, um, you know, this wine and stuff. And so everybody's understanding, Toya, that you're not coming out of pocket. And I think that's what pissed heavily off the most because when she was at the table, she was like, you know, I'm mad because I that bitch told me that she spent like $17,000 on a purse, but now you ain't got $1,000. And I think that's what really bothered heavily because it's like, girl, you told me you spent this much on a bag, but let us ask for $1,000. Now all of a sudden you can't do it. And I think that was like the crux of like, heavily, you know, heavily gonna come after Toya. Like, bitch, you don't do nothing. You can talk about, oh, you got $17,000 for a purse, but now... All of a sudden, you can't pay for the med gala. Like, girl, get out of here. That's what that's what really uh, aggravated uh, Heavenly. Um, sorry, y'all. I was fixing this. Um, so, yeah. Um, Toya, of course, Eugene going to support Toya. Uh, but Toya was going off. She was like, it's, I, it's not fair. Like, I'm offering something that is basically as much as a value. Now, Phaedra, she said she offered champagne and plus the $1,000 because, you know, she knew it was going for a good cause. So, we get to the Met Gala. It was super nice, super beautiful. Um, Alicia, y'all, walked in looking banging. Heavenly had the titties up to her neckline. 
quad, uh, not quad, uh, uh, sweet tea had her titties up, okay, titties all the way to the chin, okay. Y'all, would quad, would um, sweet tea benefit from a breast reduction? Like, I really think she would benefit from a breast reduction. I really, y'all drop it in the comments. Let me know what y'all think. Um, Heavenly came once again in a small ass uh dress. Like, Heavenly was trying to snatch all her waist this season. Just like she did with that dress at the beginning of the season. All tight and everything. But, um, Jackie looked good. Uh, Alicia looked good. Um, Simone. I'm trying to remember what Simone had on. I think everybody looks, like, decent. Uh, Phaedra, you know. And so, it's the Med Gala. Toy is there. She's setting up her thing. Y'all, Toya brought a Anila. I don't know if Toya's trying to bring Anila back. Since, you know, she didn't kick quad off and Anita's talking about, oh, you know, I'm not even friends with quad no more. So it's given it since quad got kicked off is Toya trying to bring Anila back on. I actually like the Anila because I, you know, I really liked her husband too. Uh, and he was funny, but I, I mm, y'all think Anila should come back. Y'all think, uh, Toya trying to bring Anila back. Um, but yeah, um, Toya was there. Had her wine and everything set up heavily going around. Don't you drink that bitch wine. She ain't paid. You know, she ain't sponsored nothing. Don't you go over there. Don't you drink that wine. Uh-uh. Matter of fact, she need to take her promotion down. Because everybody had, like, paid for, like, a step and repeat or something like that that had their logo on it or whatever. And so somebody went over there and took the thing down. And Toya was like, no, my wine is here. I, you know, brought it for the event. And Toya over there cheers and cheers to Toya's wine and stuff like that. Toya was go make sure she held up her end of the bargain, I guess, to, to that wine company. Um, but truthfully, at the end of the day, Toya, like, everybody's coming out of pocket. And so I'm sure everybody's feeling like, bitch, we came out of pocket and here you are trying to play in our face with offering wine. When, like Jackie said, we could have used that money. That money would have been used for... We could do more with the thousand dollars than we can do with your wine. I guess is honestly what they were were feeling like. Um, so uh, Jackie, she goes up there, gives a little speech, you know, thanking everybody for coming. Um, and Heavenly, she, you know, speaks up or whatever, and she's like, "Oh, you know, this is the Met Gala. We appreciate you. You know, everybody who is here. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Jackie, Simone." And Toya goes, that's Dr. Simone. And Heavily heard it like, oh, Toya, you got something to say, Toya? Heavily hit her with the girl, shut your chest up before we get to talking about you. <laughs> that is literally what Heavily did, girl. Shut your chest up before we get to talking shit about you, okay? Y'all know that's like my favorite little clip. And she started talking shit, okay? Matter of fact, Toya, you got something to say. How about y'all know that Toya ain't sponsored shit over here? She ain't paid for nothing. She ain't sponsored nothing. And Heavily, Heavily does some ghetto ass shit, y'all. She really do. And this got everybody looking around like... And it's like, Heavily, understand, we know you're making a TV show, but it's reality-based. So, yeah, y'all are feeling a reality TV show, but the reality outside of that was y'all were at a medical event. And that wasn't professional. Like, that wasn't good to do. And so, Eugene pulls David to the side like, hey, 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 you know, why is Heavenly doing that? Why are you trying to make it seem like my wife brought wine? Like, what the f is up? And so, in the confessional, they asked Heavenly, do you think this is the right place? And she was like, hell yeah, because this is where it happened. And she looked to the side at Damon, and all Damon said was, well, you know, I, uh, I don't really think about things like that. You know, Heavenly, she's going to say what she wants to say. And, you know, I just I just stand behind her. Like, she looked at Damon like, I dare you say something different. Like, like no, nah, I'm, I'm addressing right there. And what? And all Damon sat there, uh, you know, Heavenly's going to say what she wants to say. And it's like, Damon, you knew Heavenly was up for doing that. So, I guess it's coming down to the end of the night. Toya leaving. And guess who walks in? As Toya is walking out, dun dun dun, dun Quad. So Quad comes in, y'all know on her. Hi, hi, <laughs> hi, how are you? Y'all know Quad, Quad loves a good photo op, and uh, Quad puts on that, that like, almost like political, 
PC commentator, journalistic voice and that like that mask on. And I, that's kind of why a lot of people are off put by Quan because we don't know if we're getting the real. And so when she walked in, Toya ignored her ass. Quan showed up late, y'all. Heavenly was gone. Toya was leaving. Uh, just like Quan to do, show your ass up late. And she go in and she sees Sweet Tea and says, hi. And she's like, oh my God, Sweet Tea, hi, how are you? Is Gregory here? And she was like, yeah. And she sees him. Oh, Gregory, nice to see you. She's like, can I hug your husband? And she's like, you got to ask him. She's like, do you mind if I hug? And he was like, no. And so she hugged him. And immediately in the back of my mind, I said, what in the Evelyn Lozada? Because if y'all remember on Basketball Wives, Evelyn Lozada sat there and reached, at, reached out to Chad Ochocinco wanted me when OG, you know, when OG cracked her face, when Ochocinco wanted me, you said this man headbutted you was all types of uh, uh, cabusive and yet you got the nerve to reach out for him to be able to slag off OG. But in this situation, Quad, you said this man was dragging you and all types of stuff. But now all of a sudden it's like, hi, you know, give him a hug. No, I think Quad was trying to show that she could get along with um, Dr. G and, and Sweet T. Because Quad want to stay on the show. She want to come back and wreak havoc on these bitches that had the nerve to uh, try to vote me off Gilligan's Island. And so I think for her, it was like, oh, you know, she, as she said in her confession, you know, for me, I'm always going to be okay. You know, I, there's never any problem because I left him, you know. It's just kind of like you could have gave that man a handshake and moved on and that presented, you know, okay, cor being cordial. But I just, it, it was just fake to me doing the whole hug and trying to talk to Sweet Tea like, hi, how are you? Is everything good? Like, there was no conversation to be had with Sweet Tea and G. But I felt like she was doing it to like try to prove a point of like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm good around him. We would we would assume you can be good and also not need to talk to him. Be good over there, or not around him. And Simone was like, "G, you good, Doctor G? You okay? You know, you look a little uncomfortable." He's like, "Yeah." And Doctor G was like, "If I could go without seeing Quad, I'd be okay." It's very obvious that the ladies are more on Doctor G's side, also as well, which is unfortunate. And that's kind of what Quad feels is like, "Damn, I got no support when I told you this man like." we was fighting you know and um that really is unfortunate but um i don't know how it's gonna play out and then quad does her usual quad stuff where simone she was like um she was uh doing something and she was talking to quad she's like yeah you know the ladies uh we can really leave you know and she and, uh and she was like yeah i got a few conversations and then Quad was like, yeah, I got a few conversations as well, you know. Oh, Samo was like, yeah, you know, I got another event to go to. Quad was like, yeah, me too. Girl, walking in with your half titty out. You ain't had no rest to go. You was coming up here to show up late to make a to make a splash and, um, you know, collect a paycheck. <laughs> it's giving collect a paycheck. Um, and when she told Samo, she's like, yes, you know, conversations need to be had. Samo was like, here we go. You want conversations, but bitch, where was the phone call? But also, Simone, why would y'all expect this woman to call y'all after y'all literally kicked her off the trip and the last time basically told her, like, y'all basically was telling Quad to kiss the ring or, you know, kiss Mary to Medicine goodbye. And that's what happened. She got kicked off Gilligan's Island and y'all want her to call. But also, it's like, Quad does that shit where it's just kind of like, how you want to interact with these women but only do it while on camera. That's what's making the women feel the way they do, Quad. Um, but yeah, you guys, that kind of was like the end of it. Like I said, it wasn't too much. It's the finale. We got a three-part reunion. Phaedra knew she fucked up, so she got to bring Apollo. I'm interested to see how this, like I said, this key money Alicia, Alicia situation, girl Alicia. I hope that money is somewhere, you know, nice and tucked away and Betty by, um, you know, resting and collecting interest and all that good sh okay? Making sure Alicia got that money. She looks so good at the Met Gala. Um, Heavenly, what y'all guys think? Was Heavenly tacky for saying that shit about Toya at the event? And was tacky out of line for not paying versus, you know, supplying the wine? Because all that did was 
something for you, Toy. That literally was all it was was for you. Okay, like you didn't come out of pocket for nothing, and it wasn't necessarily distributed throughout the whole party. Like yeah, it was. But like everybody said, like the wine. How much wine like was really gonna get drunk that night? Um, but yeah, you guys, y'all tell me what you feel about this season. How you guys feel about Quad? Uh, do you guys want uh Alicia? I feel like Alicia toward the end, y'all, is really showing that she should be on this on you know married to medicine. I I feel like she deserves another season. Um, and what do you guys expect to come out of the reunion? I know Heavenly and Sweet Tea been going back and forth on social media, and Heavenly said some sh that's a little out there. You know, she up. Yeah, Heavenly, you kind of messed up and doing that shit to Doctor G because. He's now becoming collateral damage because of your shit with Sweet Tea. But also a lot of people is glad that Heavenly's finally getting that foot put on her neck. And it's kind of looking like it's going to happen at the reunion too. So y'all drop it in the comments. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And I will catch y'all hoes later. Deuces.